This week, we're going to be talking about February 20th through the 26th. We're going to be covering a lot of Venus in Aries. I am still a little under the weather, so get ready for some coughing. It's really Thank cute. Thank you, Ingrid. <laughs> we love you, Ingrid. Oh. Um, so we may be feeling a little bit of extra courage, especially in our relationships as Venus begins its transit through Aries. Mercury is going to be aligning with several planets this week from Aquarius, opening up the conversation in the community. Even though the sun in Pisces, even though the sun in Pisces may be calling you to look inward, you can stimulate your unconscious mind by putting yourself out there in the world, starting a new relationship, engaging in group activities. Through this external engagement, you can discover a deeper meaning of who you are and your purpose here on Earth. Stay tuned. The weekly transit. Astrology is a language that communicates how the planets and stars influence life on Earth. I'm Scott Tajarian. I'm an interpreter of this language. Join me and my co-host, Ingrid Iverson, who helps bring an even more practical look at this astral language. The Weekly Transit is here to bring clarity to the chaos so you can ride the planetary waves instead of the planets riding you. The Weekly Transit. Welcome. Yes. Great. Good morning, Scott. <laughs> God. <clears throat> uh, well, I'm here. Yeah. Half al- I'm here. half alive. Yes. Fucking Christ. Dude. Yes. Oh, Ingrid. Poor Ingrid. Dude, I've been I've been dying over here. I've been, I'm yeah. never sick and I've been sick for like a whole week. Did you did you get the elderberry concentrate that I instructed you to get? Yeah, nothing. I ended up just going to a telehealth regular doctor's appointment which i've never done in my life for like a cold Mm -hmm. and they gave me like an inhaler i just kept coughing so hard in fact in honor of you and your cough i'm going to take one right now yay to see if me taking one will help you with your cough just like i hope so i i'm gonna i mean there is the placebo effect so i'm going to a will myself into feeling better by you taking that uh, yeah. supplement. Exactly. My God. Well, thank you for being here, Ingrid. Yeah. Despite your cough and not feeling well, I'm sure um, our listeners will have lots of anecdotes for you. That, you yeah, know, so, they like to so, care for you. So send me all your suggestions because I'm ready to feel better. Yeah. I mean, I had a cough for a long time too. So, yeah. Yeah. That's why we're doing this whole. That's why I stopped seeing you in person. You know, however many weeks ago I got sick. You're like six and weeks then ago. the, uh, and then the cough just kind of continued for like weeks and weeks after, maybe even two months after. I forgot. But you forgot something? Oh, no. I just forgot to send myself the, um, alignments for the week and air dropping it so what's happened is there something in the planets that's like making me sick or holding me back in some way i feel like i had all these plans and then i've just been like feel very unmotivated well, i have all this down you know downtime per se but like i don't feel like doing anything i've just been sleeping because i just i'm sleeping instead of coughing i'm like i, I can't mm-hmm. cough anymore so i'm just gonna go to bed hmm Yes. Well, <clears throat> I would say that I'm looking at your chart right now and hmm. Well, I mean Chiron is squaring your Mars. So maybe that's, you know, that's definitely something that's uncomfy. Uh Chiron squaring Mars facing that wound to self-confidence and what you're trying to accomplish and achieve because your Mars is in Capricorn. Um, <clears throat> your, what else is happening here for you? You know, the, the sun, like when you first kind of got sick, like a week ago or so, or, or maybe it was a couple weeks ago, that's when the, the sun was starting to square your Pluto. 
So this is that time of year where you're going through a difficult transformation of, oh, yeah, and your Pluto's in the sixth house, which is the house that rules health. And so does that mean I'm just going to die then? <laughs> probably, yeah, yeah, most you're going to die. So, yeah, most likely, yeah. So, you know, at least you won't be sick anymore, though. So that's the good thing. <laughs> um, let's see what else is happening. Yeah, um, those are the two main points. Um, Jupiter also scoring Neptune which Neptune is kind of like a healing planet. So maybe that oh, is yay. expanding something that, but it's, but the squaring Come of Jupiter is not, but it, it's like, but that's, it's not really a positive vibe because it's Jupiter oh. squaring, squaring. Oh, Jupiter is blocking me. This, the square is blocking me from the healing. It's like, it's creating more, uh, more sickness. That, that's what it feels yeah. like every single thing i've taken to like help seems to have given me some other fucking issue i'm just like mm -hmm. I, I can't have one more ailment it's just mm. not possible mm. but hopefully every day mm. i think i feel better so hopefully today i actually feel better we'll see what happens tomorrow mars is also completing its transit through your 12th house so really stirring up your unconscious and your psychological baggage Ooh, delving fun. You just what deep I've, within yourself. Over just what the I've next always wanted. Of, yeah. Over the next couple of weeks, you should feel uh, feelings of rage coming up as Mars crosses your ascendant. Oh, my God. You know, lucky me. I mean, yeah. You should be really excited about that. Um, I think, yeah, basically in about a week, um, you're going to be feeling maybe that rage uh, all the way yeah for about a week and then we're in about a week it's going to start picking up and it's going to last for like maybe five days or so so yeah you're gonna have to be patient with yourself ingrid okay but lean into okay. your community as your 11th house north node lean into your community for support and uh so hopefully our listeners are going to help you heal. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that know how to fix Ingrid. So tell me what's happening this week. Let's get into the, or I guess we get into thank the our sponsors. Week, oh yeah. yeah. Let's thank the sponsors. And I do have a couple announcements as well. Uh, so we want to thank our sponsors though. First, I'm still listening in my ears, but I'm just going to go cough over here. Yeah. Cool. So we want to thank Brenna, Kendra, Barbara, Grace, Janelle, Vincent, and Michelle, Clarissa, Nicole, Aline, Robin, Cassie, Merdinas, Brooke, Ricky, Amaranth, Larry, Libby, Annie, Amber, Lori, Stephanie, Deborah, Haley, Janine, Carrie, and Catherine. Thank you. Thank, thank you guys you so, so much. much. Thank yes. you for donating to the podcast. Yes. You guys help us do more of what we love, sharing the planets and stars with you. And if you would like to support the podcast, if you go to the show notes, there's a support link. You can donate $1, $5, or $10 a month. Or if you don't have any money, you can write us a good review, rate us five stars, share us with your friends. Yeah. And then oh, yeah. also, um, you can get the basics of a story. Hold on you can get the basics of astrology which is the book that we put together last year we have a paperback version we have a kindle version it's available on amazon the links are in the show notes um it's really meant to be paired with the podcast if you want to learn the language of astrology so you get the book you listen to the podcast and then the third part is you go to the website click on forecast that's basically a blog a little bit of an overview of what we talk about here. It's got all the journal prompts that Scott asks me as well as the visuals. So all of the alignments, the signs, the symbols, and the book is really there to decode it for you. It's kind of like a glossary style, very simple, artistic, straight to the point book to decode what we talk about each week. Yes. So if you're new to the podcast or you are ready to take your astrology, education to the next level, I do recommend getting the book. 
And then, oh, it's actually in one of the local shops in LA in North yeah, Hollywood, yeah. the Crystal Shrine. Is that what it's Crystal called? Crystal Shrine. Yeah. It's the link is in the uh, is in the show notes. If you want to buy it in person, go to a crystal shop. It's, in, it's a really beautiful store. Yeah. Awesome. I, I haven't even been by there. I want to go by there. And the owner is just no. such a doll. She's really just uh-huh. very sweet. I had a really nice time meeting her. Oh wow. And I just cool. got in a bunch more books to go around LA to all the other shops and get the book in there. So if anyone has any favorite crystal stores that they want to see the book in, let me know and I will go I will go exploring. Amazing. Excellent. So I have a couple announcements. Number one, very important announcement because uh, there's an imposter again on loose on Instagram. Somebody oh, DMing people. My, yeah, cloned my uh, my Instagram page and <clears throat> is pretending to be me. If you want to like, yeah. hey, magical love. reading, yeah, yeah, exactly. So Scott's uh, never gonna DM you to request a reading. Yes. Number one, he's booked out, and number two, that's just insane. And any, if you ever get any message of someone DMing you to give you a reading from any person, it's definitely a fake account. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So make so sure you're looking at the real. Them. Yes, report them to Instagram, block them. You know, there's really nothing that I can do because, of course, they block me, and so I can't even see the account. People will send me like, "Do you see this account?" And I'm like, "Okay, I see it," and you send me the link, but I. When I click on it, there's nothing there. So so please report them. If you ever want to get a reading from me, all you have to do is go to theweeklytransit.com. So uh, I'm never going to contact you directly. I'm never going to solicit you uh, asking you to get a reading with me. If you're interested in a reading with me, which I would love to do a reading for you, then go to theweeklytransit.com. And you schedule it through my website. Then there's another announcement that I have, uh, which is I'm gonna bring this up here. So I want to show you this, Ingrid. This is oh yeah, the the calendar somebody put together. It's so yeah, beautiful. Isn't this cool? From Aviva. We love is it. Is her name? Yeah. This is she is Aviva. Aviva Knox. She's a designer and a photographer with a degree in graphic design, but she listens to the podcast and she's a big fan of astrology. And so she created these moon calendars, which is literally a calendar that, uh, like if you look here, like Pisces season, you know, which is what we're um, in right now for the podcast. So so it tells you like when, where the moon is, what sign it's in. And they have like, uh, it's going to be a half moon here. So it's, it's just really cool how it's designed. And thank you. Is it Aviva? Aviva. Yes. Thank, thank you. you so much. Aviva. Um, here's a, here is Here's Aviva right here. This is Aviva. This is her website. I'll put the website in the uh, in the show notes. So if you're interested in getting a calendar or she does a lot of other art and stuff, check out Aviva's website, Aviva Knox, avivanox.com. But I'll put the link in the show notes. So thank you again, Aviva. Very thoughtful. Thank you for the calendar. Okay, now we're ready for the week. Are you ready, Ingrid? I'm ready. Tell me what's happening. So, well, this is the week of February 20th through the 26th. So we begin with Monday, February 20th, when we're looking at Mercury, the messenger of the gods, guide of souls to the underworld, the planet of consciousness, communication, and coordination in the fixed air sign symbolized by the water bear, Aquarius, aligning in a positive sextile with Chiron, the wound, and the ancient wisdom that is unlocked through healing that wound in the cardinal fire sign symbolized by the ram, 
Aries and then joining Chiron in Aries today is Venus, Lady Luck, the goddess of love and beauty, the planet of relationships. So we are dipping our toe into Aries season now with Venus moving into Aries, even though the sun is still in Pisces and Mercury is still in Aquarius. We've got Venus in Aries, and that is going to uh, kick us off really into this Aries season. So where to begin? First of all, Mercury aligning with Chiron. I mean, it's a positive alignment. So, yeah, I mean, being conscious of how we are in the community and healing our wound to like maybe putting ourselves out there and connecting with our community. Mm -hmm. Yes. Being authentic within the community. Being aware that, that you are healing things by putting yourself out there, like the awareness level of knowing that that's what you need to do. What would an example of that be, Ingrid? An example? I guess maybe knowing in the past that you've um, maybe had some discomfort around putting yourselves out there and being authentic and mm -hmm. just being aware of it. But since it's a positive alignment, putting yourself out there and knowing that this is, this is how you heal that wound and it's uh, a sextile. So you're going to feel good about it when you're doing it and then mm -hmm. realize that there's nothing to be scared of. And to just remember this, like consciously next time you have that fear, because it always comes back when you do something new and you're putting yourself out there in a different way, but it's okay to have fear. And then there will be these moments where you put yourself out there and then you're received well. And that's, yes. that's what heals you. Initiating the contact, initiating the conversation, engaging in group activities and being yourself. And when you talk about initiating or putting yourself out there, Venus and Aries is about putting yourself out there in relationships. Like when I see Venus and Aries or Venus in the first house in someone's natal chart, that to me is somebody who is quick to fall in love. So they're, they're very courageous in love. They get very excited about new relationships, but they're also quick to, to uh, uh, move out of those those new relationships as well. So, so this could be a period of, of hot, exciting, quick love, but then, you know, like a, like a fling maybe when Venus is in Aries, which is going to be from February 20th to March 16th. So just be mindful during this period about, uh, quick romances, falling in love with somebody very quickly. Um, you know, maybe you just met some, yeah. I was going to say, do you think that maybe you shouldn't be expressing your like level of emotion or just being aware that it could pass? Like, don't, you know, go too quick too soon for any like commitments. Totally. If you're feeling this like new, fresh energy. Totally. Like anyone that's out there that if you know, you're a Venus in Aries, uh, you know, are you somebody that is quick to fall in love and, and do your relationships tend to flame out? However, after Venus moves into Aries, it moves into Taurus, which brings that stabilizing energy. So maybe this is the period of, wow, we have a really exciting romance for a month and then things kind of deepen or get more stable once Venus moves into Taurus, which will be March 16th. So think back to, you know, what was going on in your love life between May 2nd and the 28th of 2022, May 2nd to 28th of 2022, because that was the last time Venus was transiting through Aries. So maybe that gives you some clues on what could be in store for you this time around with Venus and Aries. Also important to note that if you were born with key astrological points or planets in Cancer or Capricorn, those are the signs that square Aries. So if you were born with the sun, the moon, the ascendant, Mars, 
Venus, any planet <laughs> in Cancer or Capricorn, there could be some challenges during this period at, with relationships as Venus transits through Aries. Like if you were born with Saturn in Cancer or Capricorn, maybe uh, that means that you need to take responsibility for your role within the relationship and it's very uncomfortable. Someone like even you, Ingrid, you're born with Mars at 13 degrees in Capricorn. That means that when Venus gets to around 13 degrees in Aries, there could be some conflicts and fights in your relationships. Oh boy. So, something to, to just be aware of so that when it does happen, you know, you're able to sort of temper your reaction <clears throat> and not overreact in some way. I don't know what to do. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Take a few deep breaths. There's just still a tickle. Did you get some hot water? Yeah. Do you have I made some honey? Yeah, I almost spilled it all in my lap just now. It's is, is there honey in there? Yeah, there's honey. Did some like okay. ginger tea. Okay, good. Okay. Should we move on to Tuesday? Let's oh, move on to Tuesday. So Tuesday, February 21st, Mercury is continuing through Aquarius and it squares off with Uranus, the planetary ruler of Aquarius, the primordial sky god, the planet of revolution, rebellion, innovation, independence, and the unexpected in the fixed earth sign symbolized by the bull Taurus. So we're going to have a lot of Mercury uh, alignments this week because Mercury is now moving it's out of its shadow. It's moving quickly. So it's going to really hit a lot of other planets as it moves through Aquarius. The first day, Monday, was with Chiron. Today, Tuesday, is Uranus. So you spoke up on Monday. Now, Tuesday, you may be getting some pushback. You may be realizing that those within your community do not honor, reflect, or respect your values and there may be some sort of conflict or maybe something unexpected happens within the community that sort of threatens your self-worth and your sense of well-being. So maybe today's a good day to remember that even though not everyone may accept or align with your values, it's okay that we're different. And that's just what happens when you put yourself out there. You're going to possibly have some conflict or not be accepted in all the ways that you would hope to, but then, you know, in, in turn, you might be actually attracting more people that are really aligned with what, or, or may, you know, this might be clearing the space to make room for those people who really do align with you. Exactly. Like it's better to have like five people who are like obsessed with you than a hundred people who don't even know you at all and like you for who you're not, for who you're putting on a face, like putting on a show for, like that's not authentic. Totally. Or it's, you know, another way to think about it too is it's better to have one person in your life who accepts you for who you are than one person in your life who doesn't accept you for who you are. Or, you know, it's it's really just about having people that are appreciating you for your individuality, for what makes you unique, whether it's one, five, a hundred whatever okay back from my scheduled neti pot so i could <laughs> hopefully stop fucking coughing to death okay oh ingrid sending you positive energy Peaceful and i will energy. take it calm energy to ingrid iverson calm peaceful energy it's almost like I go into like a whole full panic. That's what's happening. Like 
you are you're are you are going into a panic that's what happens that's why it's about just calming your breath okay yeah yeah so i wanted to show you this real quick ingrid of the basics of astrology the sextile the square and then the trine you see how this shifts like this there's more of them Yes, but these are the three that we're looking at right now because when you look at what Mercury is doing this week, it goes from the sextile to the square to the trine. Okay. Sextile, square, trine. So, so it did it's the like... sextile with Chiron on Monday and then the square with Uranus on Tuesday. And now Wednesday, February 22nd, Mercury forms a trine a supportive aspect with mars the god of war the planet of action aggression and conflict and the mutable air sign symbolized by the twins gemini so aquarius and gemini are both air signs which is why they form a trine when you look at the trines the trines occur between signs that share a common element they understand each other they get each other air understands air air understands air so this is an opportunity so you you we you spoke like up you put yourself up gift. yeah it's a what like gift, gift challenge, challenge gift gift. Mm -hmm. gift challenge gift exactly so so you put yourself out there you spoke up on monday you got the pushback on tuesday but now wednesday things clear up you have the ability to put your words into action today to ask the questions that need to be asked in order to clear up the conflict that occurred on tuesday so i said something on monday that upset you uh on tuesday now wednesday let's clear it up what did i say on monday that upset you on tuesday i mean that's such an amazing lesson because a lot of us can just avoid asking that uncomfortable you know potentially uncomfortable question or being having an uncomfortable moment but really that that's how you clear the air and it's not even an, as uncomfortable as you would normally imagine like just talking about the thing is how you get it out of the way and everyone feels understood and it doesn't have to be negative it's actually very positive hmm. to talk about the conflict otherwise it's just going to keep repeating itself or it's going to build resentment yes exactly clear the air wednesday is a day to clear the air and wednesday is named for woden who is the old norse god that's the equivalent of the roman god mercury so when you think of wednesday in spanish it's miércoles mercury in spanish is mercurio so it's a similar sounding word they derive off of each other because Wednesday is the day of Mercury. So today is a day of communication, but even more so because of this alignment with Mercury and Mars. Then when we go on to Thursday, February 23rd, Mercury then, is a, yeah. Oh, but before we move on, I was just thinking yeah. like, Oh yeah. Tell me that especially it's like an air air connection. That's like, also just like extra communication so the mm -hmm. mercury is going to bring the clarity and ease to your communication so it's going to be an easy day to ask these questions and be able to really decipher what it is you're thinking and communicate it out like put it into words mm -hmm. yeah which can be Take the hardest your... thing is to really like translate what you're thinking and make it make sense yes yes and today's a day where it might flow Awesome, Ingrid. Thank you for that. Thursday, February 23rd, now Mercury is aligning with the moon, the planet of emotions, in the in Aries. So now things are really coming out. When the moon is in Aries, it's like uh -oh. the emotions in that cardinal fire sign that's ruled by Mars. So this is why you really want to clear the air on Wednesday. Because Thursday, there could be some pop to the way that you're communicating what you're feeling. Uh, your feelings may be uh, a little hotter than 
than before, um, though the moon will also be in Aries on Wednesday as well. But it's Thursday when the moon is aligning with Mercury. So that allows you to not only communicate what you're thinking, but communicate what you're feeling, having the courage to communicate what you're feeling in the community to the group. I mean, this is a big week for, yeah, just working through. I mean, I guess it starts with being our, like being authentic, but then really the lesson in being authentic is learning how to communicate about it and navigate the conversations that are going to happen around showing up completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause when you show up completely and authentically, it stimulates some things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's much easier to, it's easier to hide in, in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But then eventually the truth comes out and like if it, it the, wasn't working all week, then today is going to be extra hot because you haven't been, you know, like moving the energy. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so moving on to Friday, February 24th, the sun, the giver of light, life, and vitality in the mutable water sign symbolized by the fish, Pisces. Aligning in a supportive sextile with the North Node, the karmic pathway of the soul, or soul's purpose, in Taurus. So this is sort of reframing what's going on in your unconscious, your dream world, and how that relates to your self-worth and what you value. Are your values in alignment with your dreams? literally your dreams like when you go to sleep at night and you dream what are you dreaming about do your dreams align with your values if not maybe there's something going on within you that is saying well maybe i need to take a second look at what i value maybe i, mean, I value something different than i thought i did or i mean even just like our like our daydreams as well like what do we oh yeah we can For fantasize sure. about so many things, but then when it comes to reality, it's like, okay, is that a fantasy that I can make into reality? Does that make sense for me? Or is that just a fantasy that is going to stay a fantasy? And I know that that's my dream world. You know, sometimes we can get confused with the two. It's like, oh, I wish I could have this thing or that thing. I'm like, okay, well, it doesn't align with my values. That's just like, you know, something fun to think about if there was mm -hmm. no like path in life. But this is what I really need to do to fulfill my like life's purpose. This kind of a thing. Like, like what? Making Tell sure me. we're not, I mean, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is like partying, drinking, like, oh, I want to take like a cruise to Cabo and just not have any worries in the world or whatever. It's like, okay, well, is that fulfilling your life's purpose? That's like a temporary dream or fantasy that doesn't really fulfill you in any way. That's like the escape as opposed mm -hmm. to like really being grounded in what you love and enjoy and like value in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So finding the <clears throat> finding finding pleasure and happiness in your everyday life, not just trying to escape it, like really making your life mm. something that feels meaningful as opposed to trying to escape with all these I mean the Pisces is can be like, you know, drinking, escapism, Netflix, all the things of living out some fantasy life and it's like, well, yeah. you're just really checking out, you're not actually checking in. Exactly. Yes, everything, the video games, you know, people that are gaming all day or pornography, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, getting lost in music, too, though music is a maybe a more positive way. But, uh, but you know, music is often sort of correlated with drinking and drugs and that sort of stuff. It so it's like a facilitator to escape through the drugs and alcohol. So... I mean, all of these things, I guess, can be positive where it's like, oh, you do want to take a vacation to have time with yourself to enjoy things and like be around people and food and places that you love. Like there's a difference between that and being like, I just got to get the fuck out of here because I hate everything like 
and just like checking out and then you come back to reality it's like well you need to actually shift your reality so you can enjoy both if that makes any sense like like how do you how do you differentiate between like escapism and actually just like enjoying music enjoying travel enjoying well i think the escape like if the escapism is if you're looking around in your reality and your life is in total shambles and you're not doing anything about it except for escaping it then that's a problem you know but if you're escaping for a little bit to sort of just unwind from your reality but your reality is in good shape then that's more of a healthy escape so it all depends on what your reality looks like and how you feel about your reality if you don't feel good about your reality and you're escaping your reality because you don't feel good about your reality then there's a problem well i mean now now i'm just arguing with myself really because i'm just going kind of back on what i said but like to play devil's advocate sometimes everything is so overwhelming to be able to have time and space to like breathe to actually even figure out how you need to fix your life that could also be important maybe just making sure you're not digging yourself in a hole by doing it but like sometimes we need to get away and have time for time and space for a thought to arise to be able to figure out like the puzzle of your life totally absolutely so escapism can be good you know if you're somebody who is or i guess if it's intention if it's intentional if there's an intention behind giving yourself that that time and space instead of saying i'm going to go party my ass off for the week it's like you know i'm going to go get grounded clear my mind and try to see if a dream can arise or a solution can arise to my issues like how do i center myself because grounding and centering sometimes we can't do that in our everyday if it's really stressful it's hard to actually get back to ourselves yes and i just i'm just thinking so much about the north node here too because it's it is a part of this alignment and i think you know like people that are born with the north node in pisces or the 12th house like they need to just focus on the fantasy the more that they're focusing on the fantasy, the closer the reality will become the fantasy. If wow. they're spending their mind, their time with their mind on a hamster wheel trying to figure out how to get to where they want to go, then they're only going to they're going to be stuck in the process because the process is all that's going on in their unconscious. Whereas somebody who's born with the North Node in Virgo or the sixth house they need to focus on the process and get out of the fantasy but the alignment in here will go ahead oh i feel like the the first thing that comes to mind for that is like okay if you're an artist or something and you're obsessing on social media on like uh networking all of this stuff and you're supposed to be just focused on the fantasy which is probably just creating music creating art painting music whatever your art is it's like you actually just need to be focused on creating for those Mm -hmm. people and then maybe other people, maybe, you know, like you said, it's the opposite. You actually do need to be focused on, you already have your stuff. You need to be focused on meeting people and connecting with people and, you know, putting yourself out there. Those are like two different kind of areas of life or like phases that we go through. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so, yeah. Well, now just thinking about the, the Taurus aspect, you know, and just, okay, how does this fit in? So like in reality, like how, how do we meld the the fantasy to the reality? Mm -hmm. And this is where we go back to, I think what we were saying at the beginning, where is your dreams, are your dreams in alignment with what you truly want to see in your reality, what you value, what's important to you, what is important to you. That's what we have to ask ourselves here is what is important to, what is important to myself? What, 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 what has meaning for me? And today might be a day where you're really fantasizing about what that is that you want and feeling, what does it feel like to have this Because then if I know that I like that feeling in my mind, 
then it's worth me really doing what I need to do to bring that into reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> it's, a, it's a dreamy time with the sun in Pisces. But then Mercury is here keeping our minds uh, focused on the logic of things with Mercury in Aquarius again, now squaring the moon in Taurus. So the moon is also in Taurus along with the North Node. So the moon in Taurus bringing that emotional sensitivity to our sensuality. What enlivens our senses, our sense of taste, touch, smell, sight, sound, and how it makes us feel. And how do I want to share that with the group? Wait, is it aligning? Are we on Sunday? No, we're on uh, Saturday. Oh, okay. The oh, group okay. That's is, why. is Mercury. Sorry. Is Mercury in Aquarius. Sorry, I clicked the wrong jump- day. You jumped ahead, Ingrid. Saturday, February 25th, is Mercury squaring the moon. Mercury in Aquarius squaring the moon in Taurus. So. I, I, I was, I guess I, I was hearing you say that, but I was looking at Sunday and thinking that like, <laughs> will, will you pull up Sunday's alignment? Sorry, I sneaked in there. Yeah, yeah. You're reading the last page of the book, Ingrid. <laughs> um, that if you're recognizing that yesterday, like your senses and like how you want to show up in the community now today. You're Sunday. saying here, the senses in the community. And uh-huh, now we're so jumping then, to Sunday, yeah. February 26th. So, and then that's how you want to be ac- achieving, accomplishing these goals. Like yesterday, you're really seeing how it resonates in the community. And then now you're like, okay, now I'm going to go for it. Like I'm going to do what is in alignment with my values. What actually feels good for me. I'm going to start maybe doing things in a different way. Cause there's Pluto. Like I'm going to explore these options that I've been thinking about that really feel like me that make me feel alive. So let's just be clear with our listeners who aren't looking at what we're looking at. That we're talking about Pluto, the god of death, lord of the underworld, the planet of transformation. In Capricorn, the cardinal earth sign symbolized by the goat. And this is and, for Sunday, February 26th. So this and is if you the want to last... see what yeah. oh, if you want to see what we're looking at, you can go to the website under forecast or also Spotify and YouTube. There is a video of us talking and we pull up the the visuals for the week there as well. Sorry, go exactly. ahead, Scott. Well, um, like you were saying, like go for it. This is that go for it type of energy right now because Pluto, the next time the moon is in Taurus, it will be aligning with Pluto in Aquarius, which will be in March. Um, so this is the last time that the moon in Taurus is going to align with Pluto in Capricorn until it comes back into Capricorn in June. So this final degree of Pluto in Capricorn, it's, there's a lot of intensity right now. Uh, This intensity to take responsibility for yourself. And so this energy of Pisces is bringing in that dream, that fantasy Aquarius is bringing in the community. Taurus is bringing in your self-worth and what you value. And when you when you know your self-worth and what you value, and you know this because when you dream about it, you feel great. And when you connect to the community and you share it, that feels good. That means that this is what is worth working towards. This is what is worth me taking responsibility for. I want this. So what do you want? What do you want to accomplish and achieve that is going to satisfy your self-worth? I mean, that's that's just such an important question to be asking ourselves because Mm -hmm. not always are we doing that. And then we feel bad about ourselves and we wonder why. Well, because this isn't an, an alignment with our values at all so even if it's 
you know, even if we have accolades or like success in something that's not actually our soul's purpose, it doesn't mean anything to us. It doesn't make us feel fulfilled or truly valued for who we are when we're being valued in a way that is not in alignment with what is important to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this, these alignments this week between Taurus and Aquarius are helping you sort of discern your values in relation to those that you're spending time with within the community or group context. And maybe you're recognizing that, Oh, I don't really like these things. I just do because those people do that I hang out with or that are in my social circle. So maybe there's some adjustments that need to be made. Like, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I'm I'm working to be this, that, or the next thing. And the reason why, oh, I guess it's because these other people are doing that. But what is it within you? So uh, another part of me is thinking like, we're not all so privileged that we could just pick and choose anything we dream of at any moment and make an instant change. So if we're feeling disconnected from our career or our community in a way where we don't feel valued, maybe making a change in one part of our life. So maybe your career is not that fulfilling, but instead of focusing on the career, giving you all of your happiness and life purpose, putting your achievement and success in something else. Maybe it's just a hobby that actually fulfills you you're like, oh, you know what actually makes me feel happy? Ceramics. I love creating. I love being present. I love making like art in a way. Like that doesn't necessarily ne- mean you have to make all your money from that, but you can find a lot of fulfillment in pursuing your hobbies as just a source of fulfillment. And even in thinking about relationships, a lot of us pick one person that's supposed to give us all of our happiness and fulfill all of our needs. And that's also not realistic. So We can't just always pick up and change anything we want. There's financial issues, family issues. You have kids, you have a home, like just finding another outlet to get fulfillment in your life, whether that's like a new friendship or a new relationship, like spreading it out over all of the things like you get uh, intellectual conversation from one person, you get Um, you know, sensual stimulation from someone else. You go on a date night, you enjoy like food and drinks and like atmosphere together. Another person, maybe you do nature stuff with another person you make art with, like not everything has to come from like one certain part of our life. So just deciding what it is that's important to us and start nurturing that part and not getting obsessed with like the specific area it's coming from. What do you mean by that? Not getting obsessed with the specific area that it's coming from. I mean, I would say either career or a one certain relationship. Like if you're not getting all of your needs met and fulfillment met from this one item, there's more avenues to life. Like when you look at the astrology wheel, it's like there's friendship, there's marriage, there's there's just all these different areas of our lives. And a lot of the time we obsess on one thing, giving us all of our joy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if if one place in your life is lacking and you feel like it you don't have any options to change that at the moment, focus on another avenue. Mm. Yes. When we say achievement, it always like when we think of Capricorn, like a, achievement always or most people think of career. And it's like, mm-hmm. well, it doesn't necessarily mean career. It can just be fulfilling these parts of our life that are important. That could just be decorating your home. That could be gardening. That could just be anything that brings you joy in the material world. Yes. Okay. Right on. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause not everybody has a career, you know, Yeah. some people, you know, if like, if you're a stay at home parent, Mm -hmm. you know, what is your career? I mean, it's your sense of achievement is, working with your family doing maybe or maybe there's a hobby or something that you're working towards and the other thing too is like where is your midheaven though you know what sign is in your midheaven if your midheaven is in gemini then you have you're somebody that's going to have multiple careers or multiple um projects that you're working to achieve or accomplish something in so it all depends. Where's your Saturn? If your Saturn's in Gemini, 
then that may mean that you have multiple careers or multiple uh, areas of life that you're looking to be accomplished. Do you have any more? Do we have anything else for the week? Well, I was just going to say too, that like you said a bit ago about like, you know, starting a new relationship and, and that's really what this week is about with Aries, with Venus and Aries. It's a great time to start new relationships. Um, though, of course, you don't want to get too far ahead of yourself, as we were saying, because it can flame out early. But maybe it is just that spark that you need with somebody and, and whether it flames out or not, it, it inspires you in some way, it gets you motivated in some way. Um, maybe through this person, you, you, you're you invited into a new community of people that are more reflective of who you are. Maybe you meet through this person, uh, other people that value, honor, and respect what you value. So uh, it's definitely a time to engage and to be extroverted while at the same time reflecting within yourself with the sun in Pisces. And as you're out there putting yourself out there, and once you get home and you go to sleep, where does your mind drift off to? What are your last thoughts before you before you fall asleep? What are your first thoughts as you wake in the morning? What are your thoughts when you're driving in the car and and you know, when you drive someplace and you're like, how did I even get here? <laughs> you know, because you're just like so lost in your in your thoughts. So anyway, those those are the frequencies. Thank you for for toughening, you know, toughening it out through this episode, Ingrid. Yeah. So of I hope you get better soon. You always have such soothing energy. Mm, thanks, Ingrid. Thank Appreciate you for that. guiding us through the week, Scott. And I'll You're see welcome. you next week. See you next week. Thank you for listening to the Weekly Transit. Follow us on Instagram for daily updates about the planetary alignments and how to work with the energy. If this podcast is helping you navigate life more gracefully, please subscribe, rate us five stars, and share with your friends. If you're ready to go deeper, book a personal reading with Scott or sign up for his new moon full moon class at theweeklytransit.com.